April 23, 2024, News Report 1. On April 23, 2024, Reuters reported that the Federal Prosecutor's Office in Germany announced that the police have arrested Gu Jian, an assistant to German Alternative Choice Party, Alpha, MP Kra. The prosecution accuses Gu Jian of providing information on discussions and decisions of the European Parliament to Chinese intelligence agencies. Gu Jian, 43, from China, holds dual German and Chinese citizenship, a relatively rare status among the general population. Gu Jian met Kra while doing business in Germany and became his assistant in 2019. Kra is a popular candidate for the European Parliament in June. German prosecutors stated that Gu Jian's real identity is an employee of a Chinese intelligence agency, essentially a spy. In Germany, he also monitored Chinese dissidents. German Interior Minister Feiz described the charges against Gu Jian as very serious. If someone is engaging in espionage for China in the European Parliament, this would be an attack on European democracy from within. Additionally, on April 22, three Germans were arrested for working for the Chinese Ministry of State Security. They stole technology for the engines of German warships from a German university. Germany's Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution Director Haldenwang also confirmed that Chinese spies are very active in Germany. News Report 2 on April 23, the Taiwan High Court in Tainan ruled that businessman Huang Longlong and his father Huang Xingyu were sentenced to eight years in prison for violating the national security law and other charges. They were accused of bribing Taiwanese military personnel, collecting intelligence, and providing Taiwan's classified information to mainland China. According to the case, the Huangs met Chinese Taiwan Affairs Office officials in Xiamen, Fujian Province, in April 2015 and were asked to buy military personnel in Taiwan, collect government military secrets, and provide them to China for profit. In addition, the Kaohsiung branch of the Taiwan High Prosecutor's Office also sued Zhou Manji, the chairman of the Taiwan New Residents Care Association, on April 23 accusing him of receiving Chinese funding and promoting peaceful reunification ideas in Taiwan, advocating for specific parties and candidates, and attempting to influence last year's election. During the investigation, it was found that Zhou Manji received funding from China while serving in the Taiwan Association and reported his work to China. News Report 3 Voice of America reports that the Biden administration is considering granting temporary legal status and work permits to undocumented immigrants married to American citizens. Sources say the U.S. government is ensuring that eligible individuals can quickly get help, and temporary legal status and work permits are seen as one of the pathways to citizenship. The report also noted that the U.S. government is currently evaluating various options, including providing in-place parole for spouses of American citizens. According to statistics from advocacy organizations, about 1.1 million undocumented immigrants are married to American citizens. In 2023, 86 Democrats wrote to President Biden and Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas, urging them to protect the spouses of American citizens and create a reunification process for them. Immigration has become a focal point of U.S. politics, with Democrats tending to treat immigrants more humanely, while Republicans hold different views. News Report 4 Agents France Presse reports that the Gaza Civil Defense Organization spokesman said that several mass graves have been found at the Senamarn Hospital in Nice, southern Gaza. In the past three days, 190 bodies have been unearthed. The spokesman pointed out that these buried bodies are Gaza residents and patients killed by Israelis, totaling more than 300. These bodies have decomposed and are difficult to identify. The head of the Gaza Civil Defense Organization said that the bodies buried in the mass graves have been stripped of their clothes, indicating that they may have been deprived of dignity by Israeli soldiers. Hamas has a large network of tunnels in Gaza and has set up entrances and exits in places like hospitals and schools to deceive people. On October 7 last year, Hamas attacked Israel, killing 1,170 people and kidnapping 250 hostages. 
Hamas still controls 129 hostages on Gaza's tunnel network to this day. Israel denies these allegations. News Report 5 According to Deutsche Welle, China has purchased NVIDIA's high-end chips through distributors of AMD, Dell, and Taiwan's Gigabyte for use in artificial intelligence servers. The investigation shows that the 11 Chinese distributors selling these chips are relatively unknown companies, and it is unclear whether they purchased these chips before the sanctions imposed by the United States in November last year. Institutions that have obtained chips through these distributors include the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the Artificial Intelligence Research Institute of Shandong University, Southwest University, an investment fund under the Heilongjiang Provincial Government, and the Aerospace Research Center. Tender documents show that each tender contract is for the purchase of several servers and tens of chips, with contract amounts ranging from $75,000 to $1,680,000, but the contracts do not specify their use. Analysts believe that China's purchase of so many chips may be for training artificial intelligence models or conducting more advanced research. The report revealed that China's main purpose in purchasing chips is to block the U.S. chip supply chain. News Report 6 The U.S. State Department announced on April 22 that U.S. and South Korean officials will hold talks in Honolulu, Hawaii, from April 23 to 25 to advance the negotiation of the sharing of the costs of U.S. troops stationed in South Korea. According to Yonhap News Agency, the purpose of starting the negotiations early is to complete the negotiation before the November U.S. election to mitigate the impact of former President Trump's return to the White House on the alliance between the two countries. The U.S. and South Korea signed the 11th cost-sharing agreement in 2021, which is valid until the end of December 2025. There is still one year and eight months left before the agreement expires. In the past, the U.S. and South Korea usually negotiated renewal of the agreement a few months before the expiration of the existing agreement. Trump, after taking office in 2016, stated that South Korea should increase its military cost-sharing and pay an additional $5 billion annually. After several months of negotiations, South Korea agreed to increase the amount, but not to the extent demanded by Trump. Currently, there are 28,000 soldiers stationed in South Korea by the United States. News Report 7 According to the Korean Central News Agency, North Korea conducted its first nuclear counterattack simulation comprehensive tactical training on April 22. The training simulated North Korea's troops entering a nuclear counterattack state during a nuclear crisis and launched superlarge rockets. The Korean Central News Agency stated that the training was a warning to the military exercises of the United States and South Korea. However, there are doubts about whether this report is true. In fact, if North Korea were really to be hit with a nuclear strike, the Kim Jong-un regime would inevitably collapse. Typically, North Korea's military exercises are more for political and propaganda purposes rather than actual war preparations. In contrast, the U.S. and South Korean Air Forces conducted a joint formation comprehensive exercise at the Kunsan Air Base from April 12 to 16, with more than 100 aircraft participating, aimed at enhancing the joint combat capability of the two countries' aircraft and their ability to execute missions. A spokesman for the South Korean Ministry of National Defense stated at a routine press conference on April 23 that if North Korea attempts to use nuclear weapons, it will face a timely, overwhelming, and decisive response from the ROK-US alliance, leading to the end of the North Korean regime. The spokesman also stated that the more North Korea launches nuclear provocations, the higher the U.S.'s extended deterrence capabilities will be, South Korea's autonomous response capabilities will also be enhanced, and security cooperation among the U.S., Japan, and South Korea will be further strengthened. News Report 8 China's real estate company Jinka Real Estate announced on April 22 that Jinka Real Estate and its subsidiary Chongqing Jinka have received a bankruptcy ruling from the Fifth Intermediate People's Court of Chongqing, approving the bankruptcy applications of the two companies. 
This is extremely rare for a Chinese real estate company to apply for bankruptcy domestically and be approved by the court. Established in 1998, Jinka Real Estate was listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange in 2011. As a real estate company in Chongqing, Jinka achieved sales exceeding 100 billion yuan in 2018 and exceeded 200 billion yuan in 2020, evolving from a regional company to a national enterprise. However, since 2020, Jinka's sales have been declining continuously, dropping to 180 billion yuan in 2021 and 68.1 billion yuan in 2022. According to the latest quarterly report, Jinka only achieved sales of 21.8 billion yuan in the first three quarters of last year, ranking 65th nationwide. In the past two years, Jinka Real Estate has suffered huge losses, with a loss of 21.3 billion yuan in 2022 and an expected loss of 4.8 billion to 7.8 billion yuan in 2023. The quarterly report also shows that Jinka's total assets are 260 billion yuan, while its liabilities are 220 billion yuan. Jinka failed to pay domestic bonds in October 2022 and also failed to pay the interest on $325 million USD-denominated bonds in December, thus voluntarily applying for bankruptcy in February this year. News Report 9 According to Hong Kong 01, former Hong Kong Executive Council member Lam Fan Kung has successfully sold three luxury homes in Kowloon over the past six months, totaling 86.48 million Hong Kong dollars, earning him a profit of about 50 million Hong Kong dollars. Lam Fan Kung, a former real estate analyst, was known as a good friend of the property market for his optimistic views on the real estate market and accurate predictions of market trends. It is reported that he had purchased a large number of properties as investments. Lam Fan Kung began buying properties after the Hong Kong property market crashed in 1997 during the financial crisis, when property prices fell by more than half. He purchased 45 properties in one go, including 10 units at the Harbourside in West Kowloon. In 2012, Lam Fan Kung became a member of the Executive Council, at which time he declared ownership of 45 residences in Hong Kong. Recently, Lam Fan Kung has started selling his properties, with one of his waterfront Fuji mansions selling in October for 18 million Hong Kong dollars. He continued to sell in December, selling a total of three luxury homes. However, not everyone can make money in the Hong Kong property market. According to a report by Hong Kong's Ricacorp Properties, in the first quarter of this year, there were a total of 4,392 transactions for second-hand homes in Hong Kong, with 1,305 owners selling at a loss, accounting for nearly 30%. Nevertheless, 70% of sellers still made money, with 31% making profits of more than double, indicating that the real estate market still has some appeal. In Hong Kong, Owning a property has become an important symbol, meaning that you don't have to worry about your life and don't have to rush for work. News Report 10 According to Xinhua News Agency, the draft amendment to China's anti-money laundering law was submitted to the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress for Deliberation on April 23. This revision includes significant changes, with the main provisions as follows. Firstly, financial institutions are required to conduct due diligence on customers to understand their economic identity, transaction background, and risk status. Secondly, financial institutions are required to keep customer identity information and transaction records. Thirdly, financial institutions are required to effectively implement the system of reporting large transactions and suspicious transactions. Professor Xia Tian from the University of South Carolina stated that China's anti-money laundering law is actually a pretext and excuse. Through this law, the government can grasp the transactions of the people, including their asset and bank deposit situations. He pointed out that the purchase of Bitcoin by Chinese people will also be monitored, as the government can monitor the transfer of funds through the anti-money laundering law. News Report 11 In the evening of April 22, 
a cargo ship collision occurred with the Zhejiang Bridge in Foshan City, Guangdong Province. It is reported that the cargo ship sank after hitting the pier of the Zhejiang Bridge, with a total of 11 crew members on board, of which seven were rescued and four are missing. Preliminary investigations indicate that the cargo ship, registered in Fuzhou, was carrying 4,907 tons and departed from Heshan City to Fuzhou City. Due to the outbreak of flooding in the Xijiang River, the crew made a mistake in operation, causing the cargo ship to collide with the anti-collision pier of the Zhejiang Bridge. The Zhejiang Bridge spans 1.7 kilometers across the Xijiang River, connecting the Nanhai District and Heshan in Foshan, and is part of National Highway 240, completed in 1988. It is understood that this bridge had a cargo ship collision incident in 2007, which caused the collapse of the bridge structure and resulted in the death of eight people. Meanwhile, the Guangdong Provincial Meteorological Bureau stated that on April 23, heavy rain continued in many parts of Guangdong, with the accumulated rainfall in 14 counties and cities breaking the record for April. It is expected that a new round of heavy rain will occur in Guangdong on the evening of April 24, and heavy to torrential rain will continue from April 25 to 27. The Shenzhen Meteorological Observatory has issued the highest level red rainstorm warning, requiring all citizens to take precautions and stay away from low lying and flood prone areas. News Report 12 China's Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs media outlet, China San Nong, reported on April 22 that it is currently the spring farming season in the northeastern region. However, farmers in Shuangsheng village, Kalu County, Inner Mongolia, have encountered obstacles from the village committee. According to reports, the village committee requires farmers to pay a contract fee before they can cultivate the land. The report pointed out that in 2004, Zhang Wenjun and a dozen other villagers signed a contract with the village committee to lease more than 4,500 mu of barren land for a period of 70 to 30 years. This year, when Zhang Wenjun was ready to use farm machinery to plow the land, the village committee chairman led a group of people to stop them. Ji Yunhao, deputy secretary of the town committee and member of the town's legal committee, stated that this land does not belong to Zhang Wenjun now, but is a collective resource. He said that the only way to continue farming this land is to pay an additional contract fee of 1 million yuan. According to China's rural land contracting law, the contracting party may not reclaim the contracted land during the contracting period. When reporters asked Ji Yunhao why he did not fulfill the original contract, he said he did not understand the law and refused to answer. The report pointed out that this incident reflects the problems in the contracting and management of rural land in China. News Report 13 Reuters reported that on April 22, the Vietnamese Ministry of Public Security arrested Wang Tinghui, assistant to the chairman of the Vietnamese National Assembly, on charges of abuse of power. The Ministry of Public Security stated that Wang Tinghui was involved in illegal activities related to the Shunan Group. The Shunan Group, established in 2004, specializes in infrastructure construction and real estate transactions. Prior to this, the Vietnamese Ministry of Public Security arrested the chairman of the Shunan Group, Wan Weixin, and six others last week, accusing them of violating bidding laws. Since the launch of the anti-corruption campaign by the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Vietnam, headed by Nguyen Phu Trong, in 2016, hundreds of senior officials and corporate executives in Vietnam have been prosecuted or removed from office. The court in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, sentenced Vietnamese female billionaire and owner of Van Tan Fat Group, Zhang Mylan, to death on April 11 for fraud. The report stated that Zhang Mylan was accused of defrauding $11.9 billion and embezzling $4.4 billion from a commercial bank in Saigon. Vietnam's anti-corruption campaign has been extensive and severe, causing a stir.